morning campers. I was just taking down my tent, pulling out the tent stakes, and I broke one of my tent stakes. In case you're wondering, how is that broken? It's supposed to have a little top that goes on it. So that goes onto here, like, put it on here, like that. Right? And this pulled off. This silver part popped right off. Came off. See that? It's off. So I'm going to have to take that home and glue it or something. I don't know. I was just pulling it out of the ground and the head popped off. So I hit it when the head pops off. But uh, I got to get going. It's a, a late start. It's after 8 o'clock. I got up at 5.30, but it was cold. I wanted to have a warm breakfast drink. Uh, I was moving kind of slow. I had to go dig a cat hole. Hmm. Okay. So, and I also want to pack up everything inside the pack liner because it might rain this afternoon. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping not until uh, not until tonight, late at night. Um, but anyway, that's the story. Like <laughs> broken tent stake. Here it is. Seven, almost seven months into my trip, and I break the the tent stake. Weird. All right, I'm gonna get going. Good morning, campers. Just leaving. It's almost 8 30. It's a real late start. Uh, so I'm going either 12.1 or 14.3 miles today. I'm, I'm probably going to push to the 14.3 unless it starts raining. I only have one major climb. That's up Indian Mountain, which I'm headed to now. <clears throat> I'm sorry, standing Indian Mountain. So climb up that and down the other side, and then it's just a lot of little blah, 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 blah all the way to where I want to camp. Uh, the 12.1 mile mark is just before the Georgia state line. Literally like a couple hundred yards before the state line. Uh, the 14.3 mile mark, of course, is in Georgia. Uh, it's just a campsite by a spring. And uh, apparently the spring is dry right now. So I'm not crazy about camping there. I'll have to carry my water if I do. Uh, so we'll see. The advantage to going to the farther you know 14.3 mile mark is that it makes for a shorter day tomorrow it makes for like a, a six mile day to get to the hostel so if it's raining which it's supposed to you wouldn't know it now it's a clear blue sky it's supposed to rain later tonight and most of the day tomorrow so i want to get to that hostel and get warm and dry as, as fast as i can so we'll see how i make out today okay it's my one hour check-in GPS says I've come 2.2 miles, which surprises me because it's been mostly uphill, <laughs> but not terribly steep. So I'll take that. I've got about three quarters of a mile to the summit of Standing Indian Mountain. And then it's downhill, then just like kind of rolling up and down, up and down, up and down for the rest of the day. So I should be able to make some good time. We'll see if there's a view up here. So I just took a break back there at Standing Indian Mountain Shelter. Uh, at the two hour mark and uh, I didn't even have a snack. I just wanted to check the register and uh, sign it myself, leave some tattoos. I noticed that uh, a hiker trail named Corgi had stopped there three weeks ago on the 8th of October. Now, <laughs> put this in perspective for you. Uh, I met Corgi a while back, probably uh, mid-September and uh, shared a shelter with him at least once something on the trail a couple times he's from Wales um, so if he was here on October 8th obviously only 90 miles to Springer from here he's long done he he finished you know within a week after that I'm sure so congratulations Corgi I hope you enjoyed and safe travels back to Wales uh, but uh, for me 4.4 miles in two hours so 2.2 miles an hour which is pretty good um, although that's gonna drop now uh, because I just took that break. <laughs> uh, and the next shelter is less than five miles. I will stop there and have my full lunch where I do my nut butter and tortillas and you know I need to sit down to do that really. So I'll do that that snack there. That'll take me about a little over two hours. I'm hoping to get there by one. And it's uh ten fifty three right now so we'll see how I do. I'm just leaving the Muskrat Creek shelter where I had my lunch. And I've changed my plan for today. I've decided uh, I was going to go to at least Bly Gap, which is just before the Georgia border. But I really wanted to push on past that to a 
spot where there's a, a pipe spring and there's a campsite there. That would set me up for only a six mile day tomorrow. So six, six and a half, something like that. But there's another shelter that's the first one inside Georgia. I wasn't gonna go there because the AWOL guide said there's no bear cables or bear boxes. So I was like, well, what's the point? But I just looked in Gut Hook, and Gut Hook says there are bear cables. In fact, some of the comments say there's also bear boxes. And they're saying the shelter is a really nice one. It's got like three levels, lots of room, very nice place to ride out a storm. It may rain tonight, so I thought, geez, okay, that's another 7.3 miles from here. It's uh, about 120, 7.3 miles. I could do that in four hours at the most, so I would get there, you know, 5, 5.30. Give me plenty of time to do stuff, especially if I don't have to set up my tent. That saves me that time if I stay in the shelter and uh, not have to take down my tent in the morning if it's all wet from the rain. So I think I'm going to push the 7.3 extra, or not extra miles, but 7.3 miles from here. Um, it's about another two and a half miles past where I was going to camp. So. Uh, that's my plan now. That gives me a four, four and a half mile day tomorrow. Real quick, easy hike tomorrow. You know, two, two and a half hours, something like that, to get to Dick's Creek Gap. And then it's a six tenths of a mile road walk to the hostel. So I think that's my plan. Uh, I'm going to put away the camera and I'm going to start hiking. <laughs> I'd like to get there by five if I can, so that means I really got to move. Two quick things I forgot to mention before. Um, the other reason I want to get to this shelter is because I'll be well past the uh, the bear zone right now. There's a, a so-called high activity uh, area uh, from Bly Gap up to Long Branch Shelter. I camped in the middle of that section last night and there was a sign 50 feet away saying, you know, danger, bear encounter here back in April. And I'm like, oh, great. So I didn't get much sleep. I was worried about a bear. Um, but this plum orchard has the, the bear cables and bear box, so I'm gonna go. I, I just passed two female hikers and they said, it's it's way off the trail. I said, yeah, I saw it's two tents. They said, no, it's more than that. And they said, I don't care. I said, there's bear cables and boxes. I'll get a good night's sleep because I'll lock up all my stuff and I won't have to worry about it. And also the shelter is supposed to be real nice. The other thing I'll say is, uh, I just got a text this morning from Crossword and he finished his hike. He, he made it to Springer, sent me a photo. <laughs> So that's cool. Congratulations, Crossword, and I will be there in 10 days myself, taking my sweet time on these last 90 miles or whatever I have. I've got two more zero days and two more Nero days planned in the next 10 days. <laughs> so I am really trying to coast in nice and nice and gently and come in for a smooth, soft landing. So I'm at Bly Gap. That's where I was originally going to camp. Not a bad little spot, kind of small, but not bad. It's got a, got a wind blowing up through the gap here. But, you know, it's a nice flat tent site. I could have made this work, I suppose. There's a water source down the hill. And I got a nice view over that way. But I got four and a half miles to the shelter still. It's quarter to three. So I got to average two miles an hour for the rest of the way. And get there by five. I think I can do it. Hey there, I just made it to Palm Orchard Gap Shelter, as you can see, the shelter's behind me. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple things. Uh, at first, I went down and got water before I did anything else. Usually, I, I like to get to camp, I like to start my water boiling for dinner, and then while, while my dinner's cooking, set up my tent and do all my little chores uh, and go get water and whatnot, but there's nobody here. So I didn't want to leave water, or I'm sorry, food out because of critters and bears and whatnot. So I said, I'm going to put my pack in the bear box, which is over there. That's the bear box. I'll zoom in. That's the bear box, so my pack is in there. And I went and got water, so there's my water. That's my water for tonight and tomorrow morning. It's only a four and a half mile hike. So this is kind of a cool shelter. I'll show it to you. you got the, uh, the lower level here, as most shelters have. And then you have a loft, right? Another level that... People can sleep on. And then you have another loft. And I don't know if I can do this one-handed. Hold on. Yikes. Uh, okay. 
And you have another loft up here, way up tippy top, and with windows on the sides. So I think I'm probably going to stay up here because it'll be quieter and less windy. Um, down here, you know, the wind can just blow in, although it would be nice to be here, then I can look out, you know, if any, any uh, bears or anything come around, but I think I'd be safer up top as well. So, so that's it. Just wanted to give you that little uh, quick look at this shelter. It's a nice shelter. Uh, I just wish it had a little bit more in the way of uh, sun, sunroof or skylight, skylight. Uh, let more light in up there, but it's not bad. It's a pretty, pretty uh, cool shelter. And it's got the table that's covered. And the table's covered and they even cut that little funky archway there. So, all right, that's it. Time for me to eat.